All right, so in this video, we're going to be doing some work with surfaces of revolution, all right? Otherwise known as volumes. All right, so what we're going to have in this section it is basically going to be something like a, a rad x graph, all right? So we'll be given something like y equals rad x, all right? And we're going to have to revolve that curve around the x-axis. All right, and what that's going to give us is something like this. All right, it's going to give us something like, kind of like a, a cone shape, like a, like a parabolic cone, okay? And we're going to be able to find the volume of this. How we're going to find the volume here is by looking at the shape of the cross section, all right? And the, the, our cross sections here are circles, okay? These are circles because we're revolving this curve around an axis, okay? So we're getting circles. And of course, everyone, every circle is going to be of different heights. And those, those heights, of course, are changing as the x changes, okay? So what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to integrate across this whole interval and it's going to be able to add up the infinite number of cross sections that we have in here and that's going to give us our volume. All right, so let me show you an example of what I mean. All right, so here is a more kind of drawn out example. All right, we're still gonna be dealing with our y equals red x. Okay, so I have that picture still over there, but this is kind of where you're gonna see. So find the volume of a solid obtained by rotating about the x-axis, the region under the curve y equals red x from zero to one. All right, so now, what is our area here? Okay, what's our area? Well, what's the area of a circle? An area of a, a circle is pi r squared. Okay, the area of a circle is pi r squared. What's the, what's the radius though? Okay, what's our radius here? And our radius is going to be, of course, the height here, okay? It's going to be this height. And what's that height? Well, it's rad x, okay? It's the y value, which is rad x, okay? So we can put in rad x, and we can square that, okay? Because, of course, it's r squared. So we're going to get an area of pi x. All right, great. Now what do we do with that area? Well, that is our area, but remember what I said. To find the volume, we're going to need to integrate over this whole interval because we're adding up an infinite number of cross sections and that's how we're getting our volume, okay? So our volume is going to equal the integral from zero to one of pi x dx. All right. So we can take this pi right out. Oh, it's gonna be the, we're gonna have pi, the integral from zero to one of x dx, and then we can just integrate. So we get the volume is equal to pi times x squared over two, evaluated from zero to one. All right, and then we end up with our volume is going to be equal to, well, we can put in this one, we get one over two, so we're going to get our volume equal to pi over two. All right. So basically that's the first example. It's, it's nothing really too complicated. All right. You just got to realize what's going on. So to find the volume, okay. Cause that's what we're trying to find here. We first need to find the area. Okay. And the area we're talking about the area of a cross section, right? A cross section is kind of one of these little circles. All right. Well, let me draw that. One of these little circles on the inside of our, or I guess you could call that a parabolic cone. I'm not sure if that's the exact name for that, but we're trying to find the area of all of these circles and that can be modeled by pi x, okay? And adding up all of those cross sections, the infinite number of cross sections in that interval gets us our volume, okay? So that means our volume is going to equal the integral from zero to one because that's our interval of pi x, our area, and then of course your dx, because we're integrating with respect to x, all right? All right, so here's another example. Find the volume of a solid obtained by the region bounded by y equals two x cubed, y equals eight, and x equals zero about the y-axis, all right? So let's do that. 
First, we need to figure out what this picture is actually going to look like. Well, if we have the graph of x cubed, we just put it two in front of that, right? So that's going to amplify the graph. Okay, so we're going to get something like this, okay? And it's going to be bounded by y equals 8 on top, all right? And we have x equals 0, so that's going to be this line right here, okay? So we're finding this area, okay? And we're rotating that about the y-axis, so we're going to end up with another parabolic cone, okay? So we can do the same thing here, right? Our area is still going to be pi r squared, okay, our cross-sectional area. What's our radius, all right? Well, our radius is going to be the distance, it's going to be our distance x, okay? Well, what's x, all right? We don't know because we have this in terms of well, we have this in terms of x, but we're, we're still, we solved for y. So, to be able to find x, we need to just solve for x here, okay? So, doing that, y equals 2x cubed. If you divide that by 2, we get y over 2 equals x cubed. And then you just take the third root of that, okay? So, what we're going to end up with is that the area equals pi times the cube root of y over 2. So this ends up being y over 2 to the 2 over 3. All right. So that's our area. Now we need to find our volume. All right. So what's our interval going to be? Well, we know we're going from 0 and we end up at y equals 8. So our interval is from 0 to 8. And we need to be integrating with respect to y here, okay? Because we're rotating about the y-axis. And we also have a y over 2 right here, okay? So we're going to be using y's here, all right? We can already pull this pi out like we did in the last example. Just saves us the line. And we have our radius squared, which is going to be y over 2 to the 2 thirds. And we also have our dy here. Don't forget that dy. It's going to be easy points off on a quiz or test. So we are going to end up with our volume equaling pi times. All right, what's our integral going to be here? All right, we have a one half y to the two thirds. So we're going to end up with a five thirds here. So we have a, we're gonna have a y over two to the five thirds. And we're going to have the, the exponent come uh, out and then flip, so it's going to be three fifths times y over two. Okay, so then we have our this is going to be evaluated from zero to eight. Okay, so now we can plug in, uh, we can do our f of b minus f of a, can evaluate, so we get three over five or three pi over five when I combine these two and then I do my evaluation for my y over 2 to the 5 thirds. So we're going to end up with 8 over 2 to the 5 thirds. So 8 over 2 to the 5 thirds minus, this will be 0 over 2 to the 5 thirds. All right, and this becomes 4 to the 5 over 3. You can put that in your calculator if you have one. Uh, if not, honestly, probably just leave it like that. You don't really need to find out what 4 to the 5 over 3 is. All right, and after putting this in the calculator, your volume is going to equal 19. All right, so that's basically it for uh, our, this is actually called uh, disk method. All right, and you're going to see that because we have other methods of being able to find the volume that are pretty similar to this, but have a different concept behind them. So you're going to see that in later videos. And I will see you then.